Play Pinata Picks and Minute Madness exclusive games with insane odds you can't play anywhere else. Make your next bet with Sports Interaction. Download the app in Ontario or use the QR code that you see on the bottom of your screen or even head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN to get started. 19 and over, please play responsibly. CJ, we got to continue with our look at uh, these playoff races. Uh, we can start off in the Eastern Conference. I know we kind of went in already on, on Toronto and Tampa where they're at right now. Uh, Florida and the Islanders and Pittsburgh. That looks really interesting in the wild card. Uh, Pittsburgh getting a big win yesterday. Uh, Florida still just tied with the Islanders for that wild card spot. They're also getting the job done too. They've won five in a row, the Florida Panthers. This was a team that was on the outside looking in not too long ago. And now they find themselves in a pretty prime position to make the playoffs. What do you make of what's going on in the East right now? Yeah. Ever since big Walt called the Panthers out to Keith Kachuk there, uh, it, it looks like they, they haven't been able to lose. Um, and, you know, what's interesting with Florida is they're using their third string goaltender in Alex Lyon right now. And, and he's authored quite a story, you know, not just getting wins, but making a lot of saves in these games. I know they scored a lot of goals on Thursday to, to make it maybe more comfortable for them. But, um, you know, it, the, this is what happens when you get to the finish line. Sometimes someone sees that, you know, sees what's ahead and finds a way to, to grind out the victories. And I think that's where the Panthers are at. And, you know, Thursday night, all there, there's three teams there for two spots and they, all three of them won the game uh, that they were playing, which means that Pittsburgh is still just on the outside looking in, um, you know, trying to extend its, its, you know, playoff streak into yet another year. So, you know, I think it's, it's a compelling race. I have no idea what's way it's going to go. I do remember saying a few episodes ago, I was thinking Florida was going to find their way in and that was when they were on the outside. So, I'll stick with them, the, the hot hand. Um, but, you know, this is probably going bet down the next next week. Siege, let's go to the Western Conference. Uh, we know Winnipeg and Calgary doing battle to the death for that final wildcard spot. Nashville is still in there, too. Uh, they have a game in hand on Calgary, as does Winnipeg. Uh, Seattle, congratulations to the Kraken. They clinched their first ever playoff spot. So one of those two wildcard spots already off the board. Uh, and and even in the uh, the Pacific Division as well, that race is looking interesting as well with Vegas three points up on Edmonton. And the Central, very close. Minnesota lost that game to Pittsburgh, so now they're two points behind Colorado and Dallas. There's a lot to process in the Western Conference right now, Siege. Yeah, and if we went back to the start of the year and, you, and we said the Kraken were going to make the playoffs, I mean, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't have believed it, but it would have been a stretch, right? I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to take from their first year of existence to suggest that a what 20, 30 point jump was going to be there for them. So complete hats off to that organization for moving forward. I know they, they made a couple big signings and trades in the off season, but they still just, de- you know, I think accomplish this by getting incrementally better and having a deep team. Um, and, and it does leave an interesting race now. I mean, we've, we haven't really talked about the predators at all, Julian, and yet they still just hang around UC Soros having the kind of year that should get him at least, I think, Vesna trophy talk. I, you know, I wouldn't put him as the favorite, you know, given that you have Linus Allmark and, and, you know, Ilya Sorokin, even Connor Hellebuck. I mean, there's a stiff competition there, but Saros has been tremendous for the Preds. He's playing an old school kind of workload, you know, up, up above 60 games in a season. And, you know, who knows at this point, I mean, as, as I say, I, I'm not making predictions, when you get to this stage, but it's, it's pretty interesting to see it go right down to these last final days. It's, it's been better playoff race wise than what we saw last season when it, a lot more was decided with still, you know, six, seven days left in the year. Absolutely. I just want to say, uh, UC Saros was my preseason pick to win the Vezina. I know that won't happen, uh, but it is cool to see him do well. Uh, moneypuck.com. Uh, if you go on their website and you look up their goalie statistics and you see goals saved above expected, UC Saros is the leader at 43.4. That's better than Linus Allmark. That's better than Ilya Sororkin, better than Andre Vasilevsky, Eor Shosturkin, Connor Hellebuck, John, Jeremy Swayman, all the goalies you could think of. He, Jer- UC Saros right now, the best goal saved above expected rate. Well, I'll say, like, you're definitive, and I get it that he's not going to win the Vezina. Like, to me, if they get in the only reason you're going to look at them getting in, especially after a deadline where they sold Ekholm and, and Niederreiter and Jano and, and Granlin, I mean, you're going to be looking at Saros. And so, you know, the GMs vote on that award. It's impossible for me to say how 32 GMs will vote, but I think, I still think he's got a shot at it, especially, I mean, they have to make the playoffs, I think from a narrative standpoint, um, but he's played a lot more games than Allmark, right? And I think that mm-hmm. that, 
that could give him a respect factor among the GMs, especially if uh, he finishes strong here in the last week of the season and the Predators somehow find their way to, to, to break hearts in two Canadian cities. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just laughing just because, uh, you know, Calgary could go through that in Winnipeg. Uh, just thinking of Murat Atash and, and the Jets that he's been covering all year. Just what a fall for for the Jets. Just a team that looked as if they were the best in Canada, and now they are clinging by a thread. Maybe not as thin as what the Flames are clinging on to right now, but they could easily fall out. They could. I mean, they control their own destiny, which I think you always feel good about if, if you're a team. But at the same time, they've they've lost a lot of winnable games over the last month or two. Um, and, and so they put themselves in this position where it goes down to these last couple games and there really isn't much margin for error. So um, you'd rather be in control as, as Winnipeg is. But, man, it's going to be gonna, real, real playoff game starting Saturday when the, the NHL schedule starts again.